LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. The FTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good evening. It's Thursday, November 5th, and on your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 waiting its 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. My name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm a lead manufacturing engineer here at SpaceX. Welcome to our webcast coverage for GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 for the Space Force. The U.S. Space Force satellites provide mission-critical global access, persistence, and awareness for our national security and have become vital to our global community and world economy. The Global Positioning System, or GPS payload, will provide a diverse range of navigation and timing services for both civil and military purposes. Today's payload will join 31 operational GPS satellites already on orbit and will help to serve over 4 billion users worldwide. And as you may recall, about a month ago we stood down from Falcon 9's launch attempt of this mission due to an auto abort during engine ignition caused by early start behavior on two engines. This was a good abort by Falcon 9. The rocket did exactly as it was programmed to do when the, in when the data indicates something doesn't look as we expect it to right before liftoff. We sent those two engines to Texas for further testing and it turned out that there was a blockage in a vent passage that leads to a relief valve on the gas generator. The blockage was caused by a masking lacquer residue that had hardened during the build process, but once we removed it, the gas generator was restored to normal behavior during subsequent testing. This was a really great find. It allowed our teams to fix something that is very subtle but can have some negative impact on the engine behavior, as well as allowed us to make sure that we can prevent this from happening again in the future. The two engines which first exhibited the early start behavior on this booster were replaced with new ones which were tested again during our full duration static fire. Both engines look great and the rocket is healthy for flight today. So let's take a closer look at the vehicle that will launch the GPS-3 satellite. On your screen is a view of Space Launch Complex 40 with Falcon 9, our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle getting ready for liftoff. Falcon 9 stands 229 feet or 70 meters tall, which is slightly taller than a 21-story building. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is a brand new first stage. Its job is to accelerate the vehicle all the way to the edge of space, where it will drop off the second stage carrying the payload. Tonight, we will be attempting to recover the first stage on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. And there you can see it on your screen right there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. What's really exciting is that this specific booster is planned to support the GPS-35 mission next year, which will be the first time that the U.S. Space Force has agreed to fly a flight-proven booster. About two and a half minutes into flight, the first and second stage will separate, and the second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum engine to carry the GPS satellite to a highly elliptical orbit. Separation from second stage will occur approximately 4,000 kilometers above Earth, and then the satellite will perform berms to raise its position to enter a circular MEO, or medium Earth orbit, and reach an apogee of approximately 20,200 kilometers above Earth. An apogee is basically just the furthest point from Earth or the highest point that the, uh, the satellite will reach in orbit. Inside of that structure on your screen, this is at the very top of the rocket, is where the GPS-3 satellite sits. And that structure is what we call the payload fairing, which is about 17 feet or 5 meters in diameter, and about 43 feet or 13 meters tall. This payload fairing protects the satellite from aerodynamic heating, loads, and contamination during ascent. But once we get into the vacuum of space, we no longer need this protection, so we will jettison the fairing halves to save some weight as the second stage continues with the satellite to its targeted drop-off orbit. 
The fairing halves we are using today are new, but due to upgrades being made to our recovery boats, we will be attempting to pick these halves up out of the water using, using our recovery vessel, Miss Chief, today. And there is Miss Chief on your screen heading to the, the uh, pickup zone. The large trusted structure next to Falcon 9 is the transporter erector, or the TE, and you can see that on your screens to the left side of Falcon 9. The TE is used to roll the Falcon 9 to the launch pad and raises it to its vertical launch position, as well as routes power, fluid, and communication to both the rocket and the satellite. Now let's get a status update on the vehicle. Good evening from the webcast desk here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. I'm John Insperger, Falcon 9 Principal Integration Engineer. It's been a quiet countdown during the day, working relatively few minor issues. The teams are ready to launch as we approach T minus eight minutes to liftoff. Now we're launching from Space Launch Complex 40 here in the dark at Cape Canaveral. This will be our third GPS launch, and all of them have been from this launch pad. Now the spacecraft team performed functional checkouts of the GPS satellite during the day and the Falcon 9 team began their final checks of the launch vehicle at T-minus two hours. At T-minus 38 minutes, the team concluded their electronic go-no-go -no -go pole and gave the OK to proceed into propellant load and launch. The team then began loading propellant at T-minus 35 minutes. We load the propellants as close to the launch as possible in order to keep them cold. Both the first and second stages use the same propellants as the second stage Merlin engine is very similar to those on the first stage. This allows us to make the second stage like a shorter version of the first stage, and this commonality is one of the many reliability features in the Falcon design. Now our fuel is a refined form of kerosene known as RP-1. Our oxidizer is super chilled liquid oxygen called LOX. I mentioned keeping the propellants cold. We chill the liquid oxygen as cold as we can get it, allowing us to load more into the booster. Now currently the second stage is fully loaded with RP-1 fuel, and the first stage continues loading for another minute. Liquid oxygen is also loading on both the first and second stages right now. We're also loading helium into storage vessels on the first and second stages. During flight, we'll take this cold helium, run it through heat exchangers on the Merlin engines. That heats the helium up, and as it expands, we use it to fill the empty volume in the propellant tanks that's created as the engine pumps pull the propellant out of the stages. Now, you just may have heard a moment ago, we're inside of seven minutes. We have begun engine chill in. That will cool the turbo pumps and avoid thermal shocks when we start them at T minus two seconds as part of the ignition sequence of the Merlin engines. The spacecraft team has transitioned the GPS payload to internal battery power occurring just as we came on the air at T minus 13 minutes. That is their last major activity required before launch. Currently, the range is green, ready to support. The weather, the only thing we've really been watching is the ground winds. They've been marginal, but for the moment, everything continues to look good. We've got about 17 miles an hour from the east. That's within limits. Now, if we do have to call a hold on today's launch, we have a backup opportunity tomorrow with liftoff time scheduled a few minutes earlier at 6.20 p.m. Eastern time. Now, all systems continue to be go for a liftoff just past 6.24 p.m. Eastern time. As we mentioned earlier, today's mission is for the U.S. Space Force launching the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 payload. Now we'll hear from the Air Force's Lieutenant Colonel Margaret Sullivan and Lockheed Martin's Tanya Ladwig for more information on tonight's payload. We use GPS every day. Today, everyone has GPS technology in their pocket. Twenty-five years of space-based position, navigation, and timing supporting the entire world. GPS touches the lives of everyday people all the time. It's changed the way we work. It's changed the way we play with over four billion users worldwide. already preparing for the next generation of GPS satellites with our GPS-3 follow-on contract. And we're inserting greater technology for greater capability. The 
and the United States Space Force owns this premier asset and provides this position, navigation, and timing service to everyone. We're currently less than four minutes from liftoff. Everything continues to be go for launch. What we're watching right now is the Strongback has just retracted to the pre-launch position. It's about two degrees from the rocket. At liftoff, hydraulics will move the, the Strongback the rest of the way back about 45 degrees from the rocket. Now, first stage fuel loading did complete at T minus six minutes. Strongback retracted. We're continuing to wait for first stage liquid oxygen load to finish up in about half a minute here, followed a minute later by second stage completion. Now, a minute before liftoff, you'll hear the announcement Falcon 9 isn't startup. That means the rocket's own internal computers are controlling the launch countdown on the rocket. Once the engines are confirmed to be at full power, the flight computer on the second stage will then command the ground hold downs to release the rocket right at T0. The satellite team continues to monitor status and health of the GPS-3 located inside the fairing that you can see on the screen. And right now, all systems are go on the satellite. The range is green for launch. Close out. And we have, uh, it sounds like in the background, we heard that stage two, uh, stage one lock closeout complete, so we're on time. And the good news is the weather is looking good still. Ground winds are in limits, upper altitude winds are good. So as a reminder though, if we don't have a launch today, we have a backup opportunity tomorrow with liftoff time scheduled four minutes earlier than tonight. But right now at two minutes and 20 seconds and counting, Everything continues to go well. Waiting now to hear stage two LOX load completion. Stage two LOX close up. T-minus a minute, 51 seconds, and we've heard the stage two LOX loadout call. We're now, since we're finished loading liquid oxygen onto the second stage, we have to drain the line back that runs the length of that strong back you can see next to the Falcon 9. And as we do that, we'll vent off pressure, and that'll create the large white cloud that you see around the strong back and maybe the rocket, depending how the wind's blowing. That's nominal, that's what you see right there. That just says bringing everything back down the line as we're closing out propellant and pressure loading on the Falcon 9. Next activity, we're waiting for the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 didn't start up. There it is. Computers have taken over the Falcon 9. We're pressurizing first and second stage tanks for launch. Waiting for final go. The mission director, stage go two, for launch. For flight. Mission director has given the go for flight. Everything continues to look good. Pressurizing the tanks one final time here to get ready for liftoff. But right now at T minus 30 seconds T and counting, seconds. all systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9 with GPS-3, space vehicle number four. T minus 15 seconds. Falcon 9 configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, ignition. Lift off, go Falcon, go GPS. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Thirty seconds into flight, propulsion says the Merlin 1D engines are nominal. We're on trajectory and preparing to throttle down in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. And
And we're heading into the throttle bucket as we power down the Merlin engines. And throttling back up now. And when the engine's back up at full power. Sonic. And we have gone past Mach 1. Waiting now for Max Q call out. The vehicle is experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. Guidance engineer reports we're passing through the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure called Max Q. From here on, as the speed picks up, the atmospheric density decreases and the loads are reduced on the Falcon 9 vehicle. Propulsion power continues to look good. The trajectory looks good. MVAC engine chill is started. The engine chill in call out on the MVAC second stage engine indicates we've begun chilling that turbo pump like we did with the first stage engines, getting ready for ignition of the upper stage engine. Now coming up in just over 30 seconds, the usual three sequence event that'll happen in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff will shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines. You can see glowing there in the night sky. Stage separation, and then we'll get startup of the second stage engine. Nice view from the ground camera looking up at the nine Merlin 1D engines on the business end of the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage separation confirmed. And the uh, startup. So we've had a good separation. MVAC up on power. On the left screen, the first stage continuing to coast downrange as it begins to deploy those large titanium grid fins. Trajectory continues to look right down the middle. Both stages are following nominal trajectories. Guidance confirms we're on nominal trajectory with both stages. Acquisition of signal, Maryland. Maryland reports they've got signal from the second stage. Next event coming up is payload fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. A nice view from the camera looking forward, the GPS-3 satellite with the two payload fairing halves separating. Everything continuing to go well on this mission, three minutes and 42 seconds into flight. First stage continuing to coast to apogee, headed downrange. Second stage engine at full power, everything's looking good with the MVAC engine. Right now trajectory heading us to where the Bermuda ground station. Can hear us, we've heard the call out, acquisition of signal. Bermuda now getting the telemetry from the Falcon 9 second stage. So four minutes, eight seconds into flight, everything going well on the flight of Falcon 9 with GPS-3. Both stages continue to follow nominal trajectories. And at T plus four minutes and 20 seconds, we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns. And we just passed T plus four minutes and 23 seconds. And that's actually when the first stage reaches apogee of 120 kilometers, almost 400,000 feet. At stage separation, the first stage velocity is about 2,200 meters per second or 5,000 miles per hour. So right after stage separation, the first stage still moving at such a high velocity continues to raise its altitude as it coasts for a couple of minutes. Basically, the first stage almost doubles its altitude from stage separation, which occurred at about 69 kilometers or 226,000 feet to when it reaches apogee, and then it starts its return back to Earth. And again, apogee is the highest point or the furthest that it is away from Earth in the trajectory of the first stage. Now, the next, next major milestone that you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see on your screen, is the first stage's entry burn. For the entry burn, we relight the center E9 engine, and then partway through, we relight the E1 and E5 engines so that we have a total of three M1D L engines helping to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We're just about 40 seconds away from that entry burn beginning. 
Today's entry burn should last about 27 seconds long. Both stages continue to follow nominal trajectories. And you heard that call out that both stages are looking good. T plus six minutes. We're about 20 seconds away from that entry burn on first stage. And it is nighttime over there on the east coast. So hard to see that first stage on the left hand screen. But once entry burn begins, it should light up that screen. We should be able to see first stage pretty well. Stage one entry burn startup. And there's that entry burn starting up. Stage FTS is saved. Stage one. You could see the plume started off small and it got a little larger, and that is because we started with one single engine and added a couple engines for a total of three for this entry burn. Stage one entry burn shut down. And that concludes the entry burn. Next up, we do have a couple major milestones happening back to back. The start of the landing burn for first stage followed immediately afterwards by SECO 1 on second stage. And SECO, which stands for second engine cutoff, is where we shut down the MVAC engine to allow the second stage to coast, which preserves the fuel until we need it for the final burn to take us to our targeted orbit for the GPS-3 satellite. Then about 25 Stop seconds. Okay, stage 1 expected. Then about 25 seconds after SECO 1, we'll hopefully have a nice view of the first stage touching down on, of course, I still love you. And there's that drone ship on your left hand screen. Stage two has entered terminal guidance. Stage one transonic. Stage one transonic. Just about 20 seconds away from those two events. Again, the landing burn followed by SECO. Seco 1 on second stage, just a couple seconds after that landing burn begins. Stage 2 FTS has saved. Stage 1 landing burn. And Seco. And there we've had Seco waiting for confirmation of good orbit as first stage returns to Earth. Stage one landing leg deploy. Nominal parking orbit. There's good orbit, and at the same time, we have touchdown of our Falcon 9 <laughs> on Of Course I Still Love You. And again, that did, that did happen at the same time, so we did have Seco and good orbit of our second stage. Two expected. And there you could see on your left hand screen, first stage landed on Of Course I Still Love You. This marks the 16th Falcon 9 landing just this year and the 64th of all time. And we're looking forward to seeing this booster take its second flight on the next GPS mission next year. Now the second stage vehicle has now entered its first coast phase, which will last about 54 minutes. And we will light that MVAC engine for a second time shortly after T plus one hour and three minutes. So we're going to take a quick break. And as always, we leave you with an animation so that you can keep an eye on where that second stage is throughout the coast phase. So we'll see you back here at T plus one hour and two minutes.
loss of signal, Maryland, expected. Loss of signal, Bermuda, expected. Also signal, New Hampshire expected.
the Boston signal in Newfoundland, expecting. Acquisition of signal, Goon Hilly. A signal oak hanger.
Castle signal, Gunhilly expected. Also signal, okay, you're expected.
acquisition signal, Diego Garcia.
Also signal Diego Garcia expected.
Acquisition of signal, Tasmania. Back engine chill started. Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 for the U.S. Space Force. To recap what's happened so far this evening, we had a smooth on-time liftoff at 6.24 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Two and a half minutes later, we separated the first stage from the second stage. The second stage then completed its first burn, successfully inserting the GPS with the second stage still attached into the planned parking orbit. Now we're coming up on the second burn of the upper stage engine in about half a minute. Flight computer is currently commanding settling thrusters to turn on and off. That's releasing nitrogen gas out of two thrusters in the back of the second stage that lightly pushes the stage and that helps keep the propellant at the bottom of the tank right above the inlets to the engine's turbo pumps. As you can see from the ground track, we're passing south of the Tasmania ground station in Australia. Following the burn, we'll be headed in orbit up towards the Hawaii and Vandenberg ground stations, awaiting for ignition. Invac ignition. We've got ignition of the second stage engine. We're up on power. Now, the second stage will burn for 45 seconds. We're gonna be adding over 2,000 meters per second to the speed of Falcon 9 before we shut it down for the second time. You can see from the velocity meter on the screen, the speed clicking up, 
we're still at 419 kilometers in the same altitude in the parking orbit uh, where we've been for a while. But this burn is going to bring us all the way up into the transfer orbit, and then shortly after that, we'll separate the GPS satellite. Now we're coming up on shutdown number two called SECO2, and this is the burn that will place GPS-3 space vehicle into the required orbit. MVAC shutdown. We've got SECO, MVAC shutdown call out. We're waiting for the orbit. The guidance navigation and control engineer has called out a nominal orbit. Look at the data. It's an excellent looking orbit. So second stage in a good orbit. GPS spacecraft is still attached to the Falcon 9 at this time. Now we're going to go through a series of events to get ready for separation. In a little bit after we have finished uh, a short coast, we are going to start a slow spin of the second stage. That's going to help stabilize the GPS satellite when it's released from the second stage. We also have to wait until the orbit takes us into range of the two Air Force satellite ground stations, one in Hawaii, one in California. We've got to make sure that uh, the ground stations can be in contact with the GPS satellite before we release it. So all of this is going to take 24 minutes to get into the right situation at the right spin rate. And if that satellite separation is planned to occur at about T plus one hour and 29 minutes. So we're going to pause the commentary now during this coast. But we will come back just before planned separation in about 23 minutes. We'll be back with you at T plus one hour, 28 minutes, and 30 seconds. Also signal in Tasmania expected.
Acquisition signal Hawaii. Acquisition signal sudden peak. Acquisition signal cook. Acquisition signal South Texas.
Welcome back to our launch coverage of the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 mission for the U.S. Space Force. If you're just now joining us, we had an on-time launch at 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by a successful ascent, stage separation, first stage came back and landed on Of Course I Still Love You, and two second stage engine burns. We have just one more major milestone coming up to complete today's mission, which of course is the deployment of the GPS-3 satellite from Falcon's, Falcon 9's second stage just about 15 seconds from now. Currently the second stage is rotating to stabilize the GPS-3 satellite, and we're currently in view of those two customer ground stations on the western U.S. that John mentioned earlier that are necessary to connect to prior to deployment today. We've got a nice live view of that GPS-3 satellite. It will deploy confirmed. And there confirms the deployment of the GPS-3 satellite as it's drifting away from Falcon 9 with a nice sunlit view there. This confirms a successful spacecraft separation, and that completes our primary mission, which will bring today's webcast coverage to a close. And it's a great view of the GPS satellite drifting slowly away from the Falcon 9 second stage, and it's a great way to bring a webcast to an end. We'd like to thank the U.S. Space Force for entrusting us with today's GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 mission. And we look forward to the additional GPS missions we will be supporting in the future. Special thanks this evening to the 45th Space Wing for range support, and to all of our viewers, thanks for joining us for today's mission and have a good weekend.